So I'm Andy Poole, Legal Sector Partner at Armstrong Watson, and today I'm interviewing Simon McCrum about his brand new book, The Perfect Legal Business. Hello, Simon. Hello. Hi. Nice to see you, Andy. You're right. I've got one too. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Many of you will know Simon. Simon was uh, at Pannoni, instrumental in setting up Connect to Law, and moved on to be managing partner at Derby's, instrumental in a lot of their growth, particularly fast growing law, law firm, and very heavily involved in the um, sale of that, that business and merger into, into Knights, and is now a very well respected consultant. So as I say, I'm going to be talking to Simon today about his new book. Um, and first question off the bat, why did you write the book? Andy? Firstly, thank you for having me and interviewing me. Um, wh why did I write the book? I've been carrying it around in my head for uh, two decades. And uh, I am passionate about helping law firms because I'm passionate about law firms helping clients, but in a sustainable, profit, profitable way. I'd, I would love my go again at being a managing partner. I did some truly amazing stuff but my goodness, did I make some horrendous mistakes. And in, I wanted to put the good and the bad together in a book because I'm passionate about people doing what I did right, but avoiding what I did wrong. This is part of my campaign and my crusade. And that passion comes out across loud and clear every time I meet with you. It's coming across loud and clear now, which is, which is fantastic. How long did it take you to write it? Write it? Uh, 20 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like it's funny enough. Here's a, here's a, here's the thing. Lawyers uh, charge, uh, you know, might be 150, 200 pound an hour. That hour has actually taken 20 years to build up wisdom and expertise in. So my book took me decades when I sat down and started typing. I'm not joking. Two weeks. It wow. just flowed. It was I locked myself away just before the start of COVID. I was actually in isolation. It just came. Of course, I had to move bits around here and there, but it just poured out. And uh, I was amazed at how, how easily it came. Wow. And it's a good time to be able to write it whilst people have been in lockdown, as you say. And, you know, that turnaround town now I mean, in, in early September um, is fantastic to be able to get that out so quickly. Um, but as you say, if you're so experienced and you know what you're talking about, these sort of things come naturally, which, which is oh, fantastic. Absolutely. You, I didn't have to go on to online on, online and research great mistakes that law firm managing partners make. I'd made them. You know, I had it all. I had it. I've got my own little search engine full of mistakes, you know, so it just flowed. Excellent. And we'll talk more a little bit about that and the learnings for, for people as we go through this conversation. And um, in terms of having access to the book, it's currently only available on, on your website. Um, right. Are you doing an e-version of it as well as the hard copy? A lot of people are asking me that. Uh, it's, it's, I, I, I can't tell you the list of countries there are lawyers in countries around the world that are coming to me about the book. I'm not doing an e-version of it. Very deliberately not. E-versions are soulless. I want people to touch and feel and write all over my book. I don't care if they write crap all over it. Just, it's about touching and feeling it and every lawyer having their own copy because this shows young lawyers how to get on how to, frankly, how to make a greater contribution to the business. It tells managing partners, team leaders, what to not waste their time with. I want them to have their own, not have it on Kindle, which you can't even see when you're on the beach. This is to be touched and feel, felt and loved. That's why there's not going to be an e-version. And you Excellent. know what, as, as you yourself ha will have seen when you got your, your copy, Andy, they're beautifully wrapped. They're personally wrapped. They're all signed by me. Not where you think they'd be signed, mind. But they, it's it, this is personal. This is passionate. It's not, uh, you know, I could, I, I don't know. I, I've looked at other law firm management books. They want 50, 60, 90 quid. This is 18 pounds. It's so that everybody in a law firm can have one. 18 pound, that's one unit of time from any, even a junior lawyer. I am evangelical. I want them to realise that in two hours they can learn everything that I, I took two decades to learn. Excellent. So, so there we go. Measuring return on investment should be fairly easy. Um, I'm interested on the cover there. there there's some pictures of lemons. Why, why the pictures of lemons? <laughs> Andy, it's not because I'm a total lemon, in case that's what you're thinking. 
the lemons are a fundamental feature of the perfect legal business. So I'm not going to say what it is, but I, what I will say is I was sat in an audience in Reading. A conf how many business conferences have you been to? How many speeches have you ever heard? This one changed my life. And it was a BBC business correspondent who told a story back in about 2007. Changed my life. And to this day, I've, it's central to what I do. And it's central to uh, the su very successful legal business. That's why it's on the cover. Excellent. I'm sure everybody will be looking forward to reading and finding out more about that. Um, in terms of the tips for law firm management, creating the perfect legal businesses, is running a law firm all about money? I tell you, I shied away from it, Andy. I shied away from that that thing for decades. I am now utterly converted and I'm utterly evangelical and I'm a disciple. I worship at the altar of money when it comes to law firms, profit and cash. But there's a thing you, you know, you and I often work together at law firms, Andy, and I know that you know in your evangelical about the difference between profit and cash. I've seen you in action. Um, I now understand it. I tell you what, it's incredible how many law firm partners, senior management teams do not understand that. So it is all about money. Where the re where I'm going to split a hair, though, is what's money? People think ah, profit. Oh, my goodness. Profit can kill a law firm, as you well know. And I've, he I've heard you talking about it. Profit can kill a law firm. It's all about cash. It has to be about cash. And I say to people, when I'm talking to law firm groups with, online nowadays, but I just say, don't roll your eyes. It is all about money. But I'll tell you why. Because then you can do more of this beautiful stuff you love for longer and change more clients' lives. And guess whose lives it's going to change as well? Yours. So let's not be afraid because management owners, law firm owners' behavior changes when the money's tight. Decisions are made in a different way. Behaviors are different. You know, coming to work is different. Get the money right and the result is beautiful. So I now, and I believe I'm quite effective at it, I get uh, lawyers to go, yeah, crikey, let's make it all about money. Yeah, absolutely. And probably more important now than ever as we go through the, the COVID pandemic for people to have that money, that cash at the forefront of their minds, yeah. which then, as you say, allows them to be able to provide the services in the way they want to provide them. So we'll talk there about a mindset of the way that law firm leaders think. In, in terms of the mistakes you see law firms making, what, what are the three biggest mistakes that you see in practice? OK, so I'm going to preface what I'm about to say by saying I made most of these mistakes. So I'm no I didn't run the perfect legal business, but I do know what it looks like now. So the three. So you ask about the three. Let me tell you six of the three biggest mistakes. OK, focusing on new clients all the time. I call it 001, matter one. Whoa, that's just hard work. Um, people just take their existing clients for granted. 007, get to matter seven. 007 is a license to bill, okay? Number two, I get this everywhere I go in the country, whether it's Cornwall, Newcastle, Wales, wherever I go, they won't charge a penny more because that's the local market can't stand it. If you've got differentiators, you can charge a heap more than your competitors because you can explain why. The next mistake they make is they don't have differentiators. I don't think it's a differentiator, Andy, that we are a top five, we're a legal 500 law firm. What, so there's 499 others, are there? That's not a differentiator. We're experts. That's not a differentiator. There are real differentiators you can engineer that give you the pride in pricing that I was just talking about. Focusing on turnover and billing. I've heard you talking about this as well, Andy. Wow, where's profit these days? Profit has gone out of style. And then profit, when it is talked about, is seen as the end of the line. It's not cash is the end of the line. Profit can kill a law firm if you don't understand it. These are the simple things. Um, underselling yourself, under delivering, having, thinking, giving new files to an already busy lawyer. If he's doing five chargeable hours a day, you give him 10 more files, he's going to do five chargeable hours a day. Why have you put those files on his desk? Those clients are happy. That's money waiting to be made. So 
you know, law firms come to me. I remember, I'll never forget one saying, we want to open in Dubai. And I said, show me your debtors list. And they said, no, no, get on to the exciting stuff. I said, show me your debtors list. We looked at the debtors list, 0 to 30, 30 to 60, 60 to 90, 100. But you don't need to be looking at Dubai, my friend. The more you grow, the quicker you're going to die because of your cash. Behavior. So that's the mistakes they make. It's incredible, isn't it? That, that, yeah. uh, absolutely. And, and we talk there about things that law firms can get better on and a different focus. So I guess part of the reason for the book, the, the book and and what you're looking to do and your passion is to, to improve and change law firms. So is, is it possible to, to change a law firm? Oh, it is staggeringly possible. And in way and, and I mean big firms and I mean in I mean in days. The, you know, sometimes days is an indecent pace and I deliberately slow things down because once people buy into this. They can't wait. It's everything they've been waiting for, because suddenly they're not being barked at by management. Suddenly there's something to believe in and then they just can't wait. Holy cracky, what have we been doing? Let's get on with this now. And then you're off. It's incredible. And I cannot imagine how long a partner's meeting would take if the agenda had on it. OK, we're going to change our whole offering. We're going to change the career structure, our pricing. We're going to change our reward. We're going to bang, bang, bang. I'm not joking. You can do all of this in two weeks when you've got the bit between your teeth. And I do it. And I have managing partners say to me, oh, my goodness, I have no idea how we have we have done this, but it's just change. Change is all about getting people to believe. Once they believe, you can't stop them. The problem is when they don't believe and then you're having to lie and persuade and mm -hmm. incentive. You know, people need to believe because they essentially I think all lawyers are really good people who want to change clients lives. That is Absolutely. a fundamental pillar in what I do. Yeah, absolutely. Could, couldn't agree more. And, you know, I think there's you're talking about perfect situations here, the perfect legal business. Now is probably the perfect time for law firms to be making those changes, because now more than ever, fee earners will believe they will see. Actually, they've been forced into certain changes because of COVID. And now is the time to think, well, actually, because we have gone through that and it wasn't the end of the world and we have been able to come out the other side and we have changed the way that we worked. Yep. Actually, this extra change here to be able to maximise on that actually is logical in my mind and therefore I will believe in it. I will go for it. So I think the law firm leaders out there that are looking to take on the concepts of the book, potentially work with with, with Simon on, on some of these concepts, you will find that now is a really good time to be able to, to do it and make that investment in your own time, which will have a fantastic return on, on investment. Absolutely. Um, can I can I add can I add there, Andy? There's um there's an, there's this obsession in our in our profession in the legal sector in the UK, maybe abroad as well, about billing. Okay. They need to engage in with their internal FD and their external accountants and stop looking at billing. Look at margins, look at cash. And, I, I, you know, I, I, as, as I said earlier, you and I have worked together and we know we're both on the same hymn sheet. But there's this just this obsession with turnover. It's hiding everything, isn't it? You know, you you you, you support that, don't you? It's hiding too much. Absolutely. And, and you quite often find that the fastest growing areas of, of any professional business um, and, and those that are the, the largest billing wise eat up most of the resources and most of the problems and have most of the problem clients. So actually, whether they are the, the biggest profit centres is, is probably quite questionable. Um, talking about the, the, the fastest growing areas, I mean, I've heard you say on a number of occasions and heard it reported in the legal press that, that at Darby's in particular, you were running the UK's fastest growing law firm at, at that time. Um, if you did go back and have that time over again and you were running a law firm now, what, what would you do differently in particular? Everything. I'm not joking. So I went into Derby's I, the week that the credit crunch started. I bought in. I jumped off HMS Pannoni where and the good life and the volivants and the champagne. And I, I, I went into a firm because I had a vision. And funnily enough, I had a vision of running the perfect law firm. That's very different to the perfect legal business. But I didn't know then about the perfect legal business. I just knew about the perfect law firm. So all the stuff I got right was the people stuff uh, and the client stuff. That, that I talk about, I got that also beautifully right. I didn't have a business head. 
And that's the mistake I made. And you, they need to go together or they're not sustainable. Or if they go together, crikey, the result is exponentially greater. We turned it around a few years, 2010, best year in the history of the firm. Well, that took some doing. 2013, out of 10,000 law firms, the fastest growing in the country. That took some doing. It nearly killed me. I would never do it again. Because what were we the fastest at growing? The answer was our turnover. And you're all seduced, or certainly I was, well, as a legal, we're seduced by the legal list, the 500 that, the, you know, rising up the top 200. That's not measured on anything other than turnover. That cruel mistress that abuses you so foully called turnover. It, it hides everything. And that is what we were growing. That's what we were growing the fastest at. And I would never do that again. We should have slowed down, focused on margin, focused on profit, focused on cash. I'd, you know, everyone would have been a whole lot richer in every way. So I wouldn't do it that way again at all. Thank you, Sam. Um, I know you're working with a lot of law firms now and you're quite heavily in demand in, in terms of support and management, as, as is completely understandable, um, you know, from the experience that you've got, the book that you've got here. Um, what's next for you? What's next? Well, I, I'm amazed. And I, I tell you, I think this whole COVID thing is an incredible opportunity for law firms. The, the arrival of Zoom. I mean, yeah, we all had it a bit. The arrival centre stage of Zoom changes our ability to look after many more clients in a much better way. My life has been transformed by uh, COVID because I now, instead, whereas I might have been in Stoke-on-Trent, then in Cornwall, then in Windsor, then in Newcastle-upon-Tyne, then, then in Clinically, wherever, that's what my life was, going from firm to firm. I now, I, I've never been busier, as I said to you at the start, uh, just before we came on air, I have never been busier. I'm working with firms. I work with one in each town and I to make them the dominant firm in their marketplace. And I, I'm passionate about that. I absolutely love lighting their fire. So that's number one. Number two, um, I've got, I want to drill into this perfect legal business a little bit more because the perfect legal business is full of the perfect lawyers. And I want to look at what the perfect lawyer is. And I'm shortly going to be going public to invite to invite volunteers along the Lord Kitchener. You, the, your country needs you. We're going to, I, I need volunteers of lawyers and clients. And I'm going to analyze what makes the perfect lawyer because the firm needs the lawyer to behave in one way. The, um, the client needs the lawyer to behave in another way. And I'm going to, I'm going to bring it all together. Uh, a part of my evangelical, my crusade to just get, I, I'm, I hate the way lawyers have got a bad name in many quarters. I really hate that. We change people's lives. And one of the reasons we get a bad name is we've just we just got too much work on. If you gave any lawyer in this country one client to look after, they would change their life. Given 300, it's different. So I want to do my bit before I slip off this mortal coil to get us the credit we deserve because it's bloody hard work doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Which, which is a fantastic, uh, fantastic aim and crusade for you to, to have. And I know there's further books that are coming as well. If we look in the back of your 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 current book, there, there are more to come. The perfect lawyer, as you say, the perfect partner, the perfect team leader and growing a law firm the right way. Some of the things that we've been talking about today. So very much looking forward to hearing and learning more about those and reading those books as they come out as well. So thank you very much, Simon, for your time today. My um, pleasure, Andy. I look forward to carrying on working with you together. We, we, we are knockout, aren't we, when you bring a real business focus to a law firm so that it becomes a legal business. It's uplifting. Absolutely. And, and it's so rewarding. And, and the sort of films we, we get involved with and we really love getting involved with are those that want to improve themselves, those that want to, 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 to grow that cash generation, that profit generation, to grow people in the right way and, and really want to work with us. And, and it's fantastic to, to be able to, to do that. And there are quite a lot of law firms that want to do that, which is which is fantastic, and probably more so than ever before. So I don't want you know lawyers to, to feel as though they are being beaten up in terms of the fact that they are lawyers and they are professionals and they run their businesses as professionals rather than as businesses. 
I think that is changing and I think that the, the mindset of people is changing and he's open to be able to, to improve, which is why it's fantastic to work in the profession alongside people like yourself. Um, you know, for, for, for those that, that um, don't know, obviously Armstrong Watson uh, are, are one of the top 30 accountancy firms in the UK. We've got a specialist team that does nothing but advise lawyers, which is why we're involved in these sorts of conversations, work alongside people like Simon. And we are the only law firm, uh, accountancy firm in the country that the law society has chosen to work with in terms of the provision of accountancy services oh, as well. You. So if, if you need anything from us, from an accounting perspective, from a business improvement perspective, consulting, strategic, cash generation perspective, or you want to, to go further with anything where Simon can help as well, please do get in touch and contact details will follow at the end of this video. So thank you very much to, to Simon. Thank you very My much pleasure. for everybody to watching. Thank you. Great.